Arc 3.0 is the flavor of the month, and I gotta be honest, it's pretty damn crazy. Ionic Traces, in particular, very entertaining. They give you a bunch of ability energy across the board, and there's actually a lot of ways to build into them with Arc 3.0. Maybe too many ways, one might say. In fact, it would be kinda wild, nay, reckless, if some YouTuber were to put out a detailed guide on a build showing you just exactly how badly you could take advantage of such a potent mechanic. But who out there would be sick enough to make such a video? Up. Hi, my name is Fallout, and before you say it, I know. Today's video is another Warlock build. For those of you keeping score at home, that would be two Warlock build videos in two days, and zero Hunter and Titan builds. Those are coming, trust me. But yesterday, after I put out a PvP build, I promised you I'd deliver on something for PvE, so my hands are kind of tied here. Here's an overview of today's build. You take your Arc 3.0 Warlock and maximize two things together in perfect harmony. One, the ability to generate a ton, and I really do mean a ton, of Ionic traces, and two, the ability to generate a buttload of arc elemental wells. I tinkered with this build a fair bit, and when structured the right way, yeah, it's just arc ability spam galore in PvE. The crown jewel of the build is this, the Fallen Sunstar, aka the brand new exotic warlock helmet. Remember my one minute exotic engram farm video from last season? Hoping a few of you stocked up and got the new exotic the other day, because damn is it fun. The exotic perk is Ionic Conductor. Ionic traces you create move fast faster and grant you additional ability energy. Nearby allies also gain ability energy when you collect an Ionic Trace. TLDR, we're beefing up the power of our Ionic Trace, faster moving and extra incoming energy. Let's try and milk that for all it's worth, shall we? Aspect wise, Electrostatic Mind, defeating targets with arc abilities or defeating jolted or blinded targets will create an Ionic Trace. Sounds like to me that would pair really well with Lightning Surge, aka the fun new Warlock melee ability slash movement toy. Again, if you missed it, I have a PvP video from the other day talking about a neat little trick you can pull off with Surge, link down in the pinned comment. Lightning Surge is a fairly strong ability in PvE as well as PvP. I'm kind of shocked how much damage output it has, and the damage radius is good too. And the good news is that if we kill enemies with Lightning Surge, we'll get an Ionic Trace, thanks to Electrostatic Mind. If we don't kill enemies with Lightning Surge, well, even more good news, it also jolts targets. And again, Electrostatic Mind will give us an Ionic Trace if we kill a jolted target. So Ionic Trace pretty much either way. Melee wise, same thing I mentioned the other day. We want Chain Lightning because it has the shorter cooldown, meaning we can spam Lightning Surge more. Grenade wise, you have a decision to make. If you want, you could go with the Flashbang Grenade. Remember, thanks to Electrostatic Mind, defeating any blinded target will provide an Ionic Trace. Therefore, throw a Flashbang, blind people, Kill them, bam, Ionic Trace. But if flashbangs aren't your bag, you could always throw on a damage dealing grenade and pair that together with the Spark of Shock aspect. That way you damage enemies, they also get jolted, and when jolted enemies are killed, thanks to Electrostatic Mind, Ionic Trace, or you. Totally your call, but again, I was having a lot of fun with Flashbang. Other aspects, we got Spark of Discharge, a total no-brainer. Arc Weapon Final Blows have a chance to create an Ionic Trace. I don't know if you've seen some of the footage I've been putting up on screen in this video while I chit-chat away, but yeah, spoiler alert, we're going to be pairing this build with an Arc Weapon, but more on that later. Next, Spark of Resistance, because I'm going to be spamming a lot of Lightning Surge in big crowds of people. More Strength and more DR? Yes, please. Please, perfect pairing for the build. For the final slot, you have another decision to make, Spark of Recharge or Spark of Momentum. The goal of both of them is to ensure more melee energy for your Warlock. Spark of Recharge gives you energy when you're critically wounded, and Spark of Momentum gives you energy when sliding over ammo. I think between the two, I like Momentum a little bit more. Recharge is nice because you don't have to think about it, but during my testing of the build, I often found I was flat out just bowling over waves of enemies so quickly, I didn't really have a ton of opportunities for recharge to kick in. Momentum, however, you can always take advantage of. You could also just scrap Spark of Shock and take both recharge and momentum your call. Keep in mind, there's a not yet unlocked fragment right now, Spark of Ions, that I'm guessing will open up after the King's Fall raid has been beaten. The good news is the fragment is totally worthless to our build. No need to equip, even when unlocked. Spark of Ions is literally the Hunter and Titan version of we have electrostatic mind at home. We warlocks already have the ability to get an Ionic Trace from killing a jolted enemy, so don't put Ions on the build. Same thing goes for the Trace Evidence mod on your 
artifact, by the way. No need. Electrostatic Mind takes care of that. When we finally get Spark of Brilliance, however, that may have potential, especially if you're using flashbang grenades, which again, I am. Spark of Feedback may also be an interesting choice, but I need to wait until later to get damage numbers on that. Anyway, moving on to armor. As mentioned, we've got our fallen Sunstar helmet, the literal crown jewel of the build. I put mine on Arc Affinity, by the way, because you'll be out there using a lot of Lightning Surge. The armor mod hands-on will give you a lot of incoming super energy. You could also turn on Arc Siphon if you want. I always like Ammo Finder mods, but again, if you feel like you aren't hurting for ammo, yeah, go with Arc Siphon. And by the way, I know there's another armor mod off in the corner staring at us. I'll cover all the elemental well mods together in just a minute. On my gauntlet armor, we have melee kickstart. Every time we use a lightning surge melee, we immediately get a big chunk of melee energy right back. Great pairing with an ionic trace build. I happened to have room for invigoration on my leg armor, so why not? More melee energy is good, especially if you put arc siphon on your helmet earlier, by the way. On my class armor, I have double outreach. That way, if I ever need a little extra smidge of melee energy, just drop a rift. And I know you could technically put on one, two finisher, but that requires a sixth of your super energy and f that noise. Okay, elemental well mod time. I got the following five elemental well mods equipped on my warlock. Well of striking, font of might, melee well maker, well of ions, and elemental armaments. Melee well maker and elemental armaments are how I create elemental wells with the build. Armaments has a chance at spawning an elemental well when we get a kill with a damage type matching our subclass element, aka an arc weapon, which again, we will be using an arc weapon. Melee well maker has a shot at making a well on power powered melee final blows, and believe me, we will be doing plenty of that. Once we've spawned an elemental well, picking it up allows the other three mods to shine. Well of Striking straight up gives melee energy, exactly what we want. Piggybacking off of that, Well of Ions causes our next melee to do increased damage, meaning we're beefing up our already fun Lightning Surge ability. Finally, Font of Might makes it so that when we pick up an arc elemental well, any arc weapon that we have will get an extra 25% damage output for free. And enough beating around the bush, our arc weapon for today is the brand new Delicate Tomb Exotic Fusion Rifle. I love this fusion rifle in PvE. The hip fire spread is kind of weird, but it's a rock solid weapon. The exotic perk is what we're really interested in though. Final blows with this weapon have a chance to generate ionic traces. Powerful enemies will always generate an ionic trace. Now pair that together with the weapon's other perk, Tempest Cascade. Picking up an ionic trace overcharges the weapon's next shot, jolting the target on a hit. And remember our old friend Electrostatic Mind defeating a jolted target? Boom! Free Ionic Trace. Quick note, even though I love this fusion rifle, the exotic catalyst is broken right now. And I don't mean it's really good. I mean, it's actually literally broken, as in you can't earn it. But whenever Bungie fixes that, it will be wild. With the exotic catalyst, Ionic Traces will reload the gun from reserves. Perfect for this build. For my kinetic weapon, I put on the Boudica C. Not because I wanted to try and do my best true Vanguard impression, but because I saw my Boudica has the brand new perk, Pugilist. Final blows with the weapon generate melee energy. Perfect. For my power weapon, of course, you know it's the Storm Chaser. I mean, for the love of God, I have Font of Might turned on. Do you know how disgusting a firing line Font of Might Storm Chaser is? I'll tell you, pretty damn disgusting. But you put it all together and good God almighty, PVE ability spam galore. You've got multiple sources of generating ionic traces, your melee, your grenade, your fusion rifle, you're jolting and blinding people. You've got your exotic helmet giving you faster and beefier ionic traces. And while you're flying around the map jolting people, you're generating elemental wells, which only make you more powerful. Uh-oh, out of melee energy? Not for long, bitch because you can drop an Outreach Warlock Rift whenever you want for an instant chunk of melee energy or tap away with any Pugilist weapon for chunks of melee energy. I no joke am having a ton of fun with this build. Next time you pop into Expedition or Catch Crash, give it a try. And after you've done that, come back here and tell me down in the comment section if you liked the build. And let me know if you try any other weapons with the build. I tried out Risk Runner, fun, but I like the Fusion Rifle better. While you're down in the comment section, do me a favor and remember to subscribe free to do and a great way to support the channel thanks very much for watching and i'll see you on stream